Mary from Jimmy Bean's Wool. And I'm Diane from Knitting Pure and Simple. And today we're going to show you how to cast on for a top down, uh, top down cardigan. <laughs> Almost forgot what we were casting on for. So, um, Diane has a, a particular way that she usually likes to do it and that she recommends. And so why don't you tell me, what, what kind of cast on do you usually recommend? Well, I usually use a long tail cast on, but whatever cast on the knitter prefers is fine, a cable cast on or a knitted cast on. Uh, I don't recommend a simple loop cast on or a provisional cast on for this, uh, for a top down sweater because the whole weight of the sweater hangs off of the neckband and it really needs to be sturdy enough cast on to support that. So it needs to support the whole weight of the sweater. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, here, today I'm going to show um, how to do a long tail cast on. And I hope I've got my hands mm -hmm. there. Okay. And a lot of people start with a slip knot, but you don't do that. You don't mm -hmm. need a knot at no, the beginning. No, I don't start with a slip knot, but you can if you prefer to. I just start with my long tail and I hold my yarn both ends, long tail towards my body, and I just put my needle under, hold on to it, and then I start. Okay, well, and actually, since I'm doing for a cast on, I'm going to cast on two, and place a marker, and then I'm going to cast on, oh, how many should I cast on? Five. Five. And this is just a demonstration cast on. For your sweater, you'd be casting on many more than this. <laughs> and then, I'm going to do the next section. How many for this section? Go slower. And how many should I cast on for this section? Oh, for the back, let's do ten. Eight, nine, and ten. Uh -huh. I'm going to place my third marker, and then I'm going to repeat the five. The yarn was coming unplied a little bit, mm -hmm. so you let it go. Yeah, so I have a tendency to hold on to it, and so it kind of untwists for whatever reason. Right? Yes. So I, every so often I let go and let it return to its natural position. And there we go. So there I cast on, demonstrated how you cast on. And here we've got one that's already cast on. All right. So, and you can see here, Here we have we have our two front stitches because this is a cardigan. We're not joining in the round just yet. So we have two front stitches and a marker. Then we have our shoulder stitches, our back stitches, our other shoulder stitches. And those shoulder stitches will become s the sleeves. Yes, and the other front. So those, yeah, as Diane says, those shoulder stitches will be increasing on each side of each of these markers so that will make it wide and become the top of the, sh the shoulder the top of the shoulder and into the sleeve so explain that correctly okay now now i'm going to show you how to do those increases okay if you aren't here to work Knit the first stitch. Now I'm one stitch in front of that first marker there. So now I'm going to do a knit front and back. So I'm going to knit in the front. And then not slipping the stitch off the needle, I'm going to go into the back of the loop and work it again. So now I've just made two stitches out of one stitch. Slip it off. Now I'm going to slip my marker. 
And now I'm going to do my increase again. Now, explain to people why we're doing increases on either side of those markers, Diane. Well, as you increase on either side of the marker, each section, the sleeve section and the back section, they grow. And they get bigger and bigger until they're the size that you need them to be before you divide for the sleeves. Okay, so a lot of people when they're doing top downs they get very confused about doing the in, uh, increases so close together. And it's because you're creating a faux raglan look, well basically a raglan sleeve. So and if you look at this sweater, might be kind of hard to see, but you can see the raglan line coming right down. And that is where the increases are made. Okay. So, and here I'm ready to do my next, I'm at my next marker, ready to do the next pair of increases. So, I'm going to knit into the front, knit into the back. Slip my marker. And I should mention why Terry is using those kind of markers. Those are the markers that I always use because I lose the others. <laughs> <laughs> so these are always handy and uh, just want to, they're made with a scrap yarn and a contrast color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that you uh, tie the knot tight so that you don't come undone while you're knitting. That's a good point. And you can use whatever markers you like. You just want yes. a marker that does not migrate, so you don't want to use a split ring marker if you can avoid it. I By like migrating, you mean you don't want it to move. You, yeah. need, you need to keep that increase line straight. Straight, yes. And I'm going to move quickly on these next couple just so we can get over to the next increase. And for those of you who knit English style and subcontinental. I'll do a few stitches that way too. So that go slower. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to go slow when you know what it you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here I am ready to do my next stitch. So here I'm doing a knit front and back English style. So I'm going to knit into the back of the, or knit the stitch normally. Then without slipping it off, I'm going into the back of the stitch. Wrapping it and bring it through. Now that I've created two stitches from that one, I'm slipping it off the needle. Slipping my marker. And now I'm going to do the stitch after the marker. So there's the knit. There's the knit in the back. There we go. And then I'm going to knit over it and get the very last. do a make one increase. Oh, that's true. Because make ones, I'll do that after I do this one. So here I'm back to my regular, the regular knit front and back. There's that one. I'm going to slip the marker. I'm going to do my next front and back. And very often, on the increases on the front of a cardigan, we're going to do a make one to in to make more of a V-neck. Is that mostly V-necks that we do that make one? No, you'll actually be doing this on, on, a, on a scoop neck cardigan too, too. because you're going to add those front stitches one at a time. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be increasing not only before and after each marker, but also at the front edge. Actually, let's do it on that one because okay. this was not a good place to do a make one and have it very clear. Okay. You can just join that yarn and, and do it right there because okay. you're on the uh, right side. Okay. I'm going to do two just to stabilize it. Okay, so there's a make one right there. So to make one, 
you're going to find this little bar that's right between the two stitches. And can you see that clearly? There's the little bar, and with my tip of my left needle, I'm going to pick it up from front to back, and then I'm going to go into the back of the loop and knit it, and I've made a make one. I'll do it again. And that's a, that's an increase, and it's a little more invisible than the knit in the front and the back of the stitch yeah. increase. Let me do it one more time. So, here I've got my two stitches. Here's the ladder, what I call a ladder between them. I'm going to go into the front of the loop with my left needle, and then I'm going to knit into the back of that loop I've just picked up. Just like that. And then I'm going to knit my next stitch. Okay? So okay. that's how so you make one. You'll be working back and forth for a while, adding those front stitches, and then at a certain point, you're going to be you're going to be casting on some stitches at the end of a row. Yeah. So we can let me put these back on here. So you just finished the last increase row, mm -hmm. and now it's going to give you an instruction that says to cast on at either the beginning or the end of the next row. So, I've just come along here and I've just ended a purl row, so I could cast on here or more often casting on at the beginning. Now, people do get confused on this one. It's like, how do you do that? This is where what I call a backwards loop works. And you called it a little differently? You a said twisted a loop? A twisted loop. And all I do is grab my hand, yarn lay my thumb across it, wrap it around my thumb, and just put it on like that. It's a very simple cast on. It's not suitable for a large number of stitches because it tends to grow as you're knitting it, but this is a great way to add stitches at the beginning of a row. Or for buttonholes, too, anytime when you're adding stitches in the middle of the project. And then you can turn it and just work back in the seat stitch. Mm -hmm. That's when you would start the, the seat, seat stitch. stitch on if, or whatever type ribbing. I think most of the time when you do it is a seat stitch. And here we have a project that's had the seat stitch already starting. Okay. So here, maybe we could show Yeah, the, oh, uh, here's, our, here's our increases. This is the line of increases. Mm -hmm. And here Remember we were saying, here's the front, and here's the shoulder, and you see how this is increased to become wide, so it'll go over the shoulder. And here's our line of increases at the front of the shoulder, on the back of the shoulder. And you can see the increases at the front. Yeah, and here. Here's where we increased, and then we cast some on there with that backwards loop. Yep, and this is where we did our cast on. Hey, get back on there. Oh. Don't lose those stitches. Okay. So, seed stitch is where you're knitting one stitch and purling one stitch over a certain number of stitches, and then when you turn, you're going to knit the purls and purl the knits. That first and stitch is backwards. Right, it is. It's because I put it back on the row. <laughs> there. there we go. Now it's on the right. So, as you can see here, the there's some stitches that look like little underlines. Those are the purl stitches. So they're up close to the needle, and in between those, can you get those, Pete? Mm -hmm. There's like a V, a right side up V. Those are the knit stitches. That's how you tell them apart. This is a purl. This is a knit. So I know that when I start this one, since this very first one is a purl, I'm going to knit it. And you're doing that because you're doing the opposite of what you see. Exactly. If you see a purl, you knit it. And if you see a knit, you, you purl, purl it. it because we're working seed stitch. Yeah, so. Get my thumb out of the way. You can see what I'm doing all about it. This is seed stitch is one of the reasons I learned to knit continental. There's a lot <laughs> less hand movement. <laughs> yes. Now I can do some continental. So I'm ready to do a knit. Because you see this one's a purl. And that's how to keep track, is to look at the next stitch on your needle to tell what to do with it. Yeah, the next one is a knit, so I'm going to purl it. 
So you don't have to have a good memory. Just yep. look down. Just look at it. Next one, you see it's underlined, so that's pearl, so I'm going to knit it. The next one's a V. And then a pearl. The next one's an underline, so I'm going to pearl it. Or knit it, excuse me. Even if my tongue gets confused, <laughs> I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and there's a V, so I'm going to pearl it. And then we're re ready to work the body of our sweater, which is just all in knits. Okay. So that's how you do it. And so we've kept our seed stitch intact. So that's how you begin a top down sweater. And, and you're going to keep increasing now for quite a while until you get the, to the divide for the sleeves this, part. Yeah. And you're going to go, and next video we do, we'll show you how to divide for those sleeves. So. I'm Terry from Jimmy Bean's Wool. And I'm Diane from Knitting Pure and Simple. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thunder rumbles on this American summer night.